Well, it is always a pleasure for us to welcome back to the program the head coach of the University of Maryland football program. He is Coach Mike Loxley, and he's getting ready for the Duke's Mayo Bowl next Friday. Coach, it's Glenn. It's good to catch up with you as always. Thank you for taking the time for us this morning. No problem. How you doing, Glenn? I'm all right, man. Uh, you Okay, take me through this. When they come to you and say, hey, Coach, you're in for doing the Mayo bath, right? Is there any part of you that's like, do I have a choice? Is there a way out of this? Um, yeah, I can tell you that I, I don't mind mayo on my sandwich, but I saw a video of what it looks like and <laughs> was not very appealing. Yeah. But I, I, I'll be the first to tell you I'm a, I'm a team first guy and, and you know really excited about being able to take part in the Duke's Mayo Bowl. So this was the one that I really wanted us to go to when we started looking at some of the choices we had. And if it's part of uh, the process of, of, of winning, I'm all for it. Right, right. That's the, that is the point of this, is that when you get there, you'll be able to enjoy the Duke's Mayo Bath because you will have won a bowl game for a second consecutive year. Exactly. And that's the part that matters. Um, when you say you're a Mayo guy on sandwiches, I'm not a Mayo fan, like, at all. It's just not my thing. I'm not, like, I do it, but I, I, I think they, they can be better condiments. What is your go-to, like, if, is it, you know, make a ham sandwich. Are you putting mayonnaise on it? Are you a regular mayonnaise guy? I am. I'm a mayo guy on my burgers. I'm a mayo guy on my sandwiches. Not an extra mayo guy. And, you know, for some of the old school people, it's like that old movie, Undercover Brother. All right, yes, um, yes. You got. Yeah. Do, you, do you carry hot sauce with you at all times? And I don't keep the hot sauce with me, but I do like spicy. So I'm, I'm always trying to figure out a way to spice it up, but I don't carry hot sauce See, that's, with the that's my point about man i just feel like you could go with like a nice aioli and it i know it's mayo based so technically it is mayo but like it's just it's a little bit better than a traditional mayonnaise typically and, and I, I agree with that i just don't do dry sandwiches like that's I, hard for me to just a dry sandwich is like scratching a chalkboard for me i okay give me your ah, this is the, we could just do this by the way i know we're going to talk football but we can just talk sandwiches and i'd be on i'd be on board with that um, are you a BLT man? Oh, 100%. See, that, I even had the right, fried please. egg on it. I, I call it the belt sandwich because I do the fried egg on it. I don't hard. think I've ever done fried egg on a BLT. You might be taking me to a new place, Coach. Um, I, I, don't know, I don't know if you noticed. I mean, I am um, physically <laughs> challenged to, to the, these types of conversations. So. <laughs> You're saying this is your wheelhouse. Yeah, we're in my wheelhouse <laughs> right here, Glenn. an area of expertise for this. But, but, you know, New Year's is coming, so I'm going to start a New Year's resolution, and then it won't be in my wheelhouse. So let's go. We'll I, enjoy it while we can. Hey, man, as long as you keep winning. Um, that's, that's, I, I want you to be healthy, Coach. I want to make that abundant. I support you being healthy in any uh, in any capacity. It was uh, I had to go through something like this. I was I was like 250 a few years back. And had to uh, and had to to get my life a little bit in order. So I a hundred percent support uh, health at all turns. I think that's a wonderful thing, um, Coach. I, I know that there's probably I, I, I take me take me through this for you as a coach. When you get to a point like this where you've made progress, you 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 improved upon where you guys were a year ago. You're in a higher profile bowl game. It's clear that things are going in the right direction but yet you know there were opportunities for it to be even better than it was this season, and you were so close in those Ohio State-Purdue games. How do you reflect on the totality of all of that? Yeah, I think the big piece is, is focusing on the trajectory going in the right direction and then taking those losses uh, and making them lessons for us. I mean, when you look at the Purdue game and, you know, the blocked extra point, um, you know, they – you know, regardless of whether they were on size or off size, we didn't finish the play on the wing. Um, we had three opportunities inside the 50 where we came away with no points. Like, those are the things we can control. And I've always been really uh, solution-based when it comes to solving things and not a guy that just focuses on the problem. And so, you know, for us, we've got to figure out how to finish games like those close games we've had. I mean, we've shrunk the, the margins of defeat versus some of the top teams in our uh, – in our league, but now find out and figure a way how to win those games. And, you know, that's a tough step to take, but it's one that I think our players and, and our, our program are ready to take. Uh, Mike Loxley is with us here on GCR. Coach, it feels like such a dumb guy question, right? But, like, wh what is it? Can you put your finger on what is the biggest difference? Because to your point, 
you know, a- outside of, you know, one or two. Obviously, I know the Wisconsin game didn't go the way you wanted it, but all these yeah. other games, you're, you're right there. It, can you put your finger on what the biggest difference is for this program in the next couple of years to, to finishing those games and winning them? Well, I think what you saw, Glenn, and we point to the two we didn't finish, but think back to the Indiana game where we did finish. Sure. Uh, think back to the SMU game where we were in a dogfight and we found a way to come back from behind to win. Uh, so we, we've won some. I think the next step is the consistency of being in those close games and finishing every time and not some of the time. I mean, I, I man, it, you're right there. I, I can only imagine how frustrating it must be, right? Like, I can only imagine the difficulty of knowing that you've got the program exactly where you want it. It's just, oh, it's it's so close. It's right there. Um, Coach, yeah. the, the biggest thing for you this season, b- b- beyond broadly, like just saying, hey, we did, we continued on that trajectory, but the biggest area where you thought your team improved during the course of the season was what? i say on our defensive side of the ball, um, the consistency of – how we played in the second half of games. And, you know, the goal is to play that way the entire part of the game. But when we started looking at the self-scout and, you know, against really good teams, uh, our defensive staff did a good job of figuring out what they were doing, making the necessary adjustments, and our players went out and executed. And so that piece of us uh, as a team, and then I think just um, the running game as a complement to what everybody knew going in that we had a – talented receiver room and, and always have been able to throw the football, but to win in the big 10 in November, you're going to have to run the football. And, you know, we, we sputtered there in some of the, the cold weather, windy, rainy games, and that's the part, but we came back and finished really strong in the Rutgers game. So um, I think those two areas are the areas where I saw some vast improvement, but we still got a way to go. Uh, he is Mike Loxley. He's with us here on GCR. Coach, obviously, uh, Leah told everybody he's going to wait until after the bowl game to make a decision. Can you just take me through your role and and trying to help him, knowing, of course, you know, y- you wouldn't be upset at all to have another year of Talia Tungavailoa, but knowing that you want to do what's right for the young man, what does that look like, and what are those conversations like with you and he? Yeah, I mean, uh, not very many conversations between he and I in terms of, you know, what we can and will do because anybody that's watched him – during his time here, has seen the, the progression of of how he's played. He's gotten better every year. He's been in our program, and I do think another year in our system, and he'll be going into the uh, 23 season. You know, the the best returning quarterback, hopefully, in the Big Ten. Um, and so, to me, I think that speaks volumes. But these are personal choices, man. And I I have not one time had a problem with any kid that decided whether to declare like guys like Deontay Banks and yeah. Rakim have done uh, or transfer out like guys like C.J. Dupree and some of the other guys have decided to do because this is the world we live in in college football and uh, coaches have had the ability to leave and do things to better themselves and so why not the players? Now, I, I like to see it be a little – uh, more organized and in, in, in the way it's been being done where twice a year your whole team becomes free agents and you're limited with how many visits you can take and limited with how many scholarships you have. And we've got to navigate that. But the conversation is strictly a personal and business between him and his family because the last thing I ever want to do is convince a kid to not declare and then he comes back and has an injury and now it's, hey, coach, I did this because of you. Or to a kid comes in and says he doesn't want to be here uh, I don't want anybody in this program that doesn't want to be sure. here. I'm not going to convince you to be here. So that's not what I'm doing. Um, you know, we wish everybody well, and, and everybody has business decisions to make when it comes to staying and going. But I know one thing, it, it won't slow our program down one iota. We're going to go find the people that want to be here, that want to help us continue to take the next step. Uh, twofold from that. One, I know you and I have talked a lot about it, and I've always appreciated the fact that you have prioritized that you want what's best for the players. You know that there's a lot of people that have continued to say, you know, this is ruining college football, and, and you've kind of always had the exact opposite, which is, no, nah, this is this is what's best. What's best for the kids is what's best. That's what matters the most. I agree. That's totally my approach. Uh, as I said before, as a coach, you know, I get a chance to – we win here, and all of a sudden, I get a chance to make a decision that betters myself, my family, uh, personally. Yep. Uh, those are the decisions I get to make. So, you know, players have the same opportunities. Um, obviously, we want guys to want to be here. Uh, we're trying to build a program that has the consistency. You know, I'll be the first to tell you, I made the decision 
to recruit high school kids. When you look at the way our class is shaping up, um, I'm not a big transfer portal guy other than the field necessary needs like I've done with junior college players because I want a consistency in, in what that locker room is like. And so, you know, some programs have gone total transfer portal. It's affected the high school recruit. Uh, but that's not kind of how we want to do things here. I understand that. I understand that t- totally. Coach, with that in mind, the, the, uh, there's been a lot of talk about bowl games specifically. And, you know, it's some of your guys are choosing not to play in the bowl games, and we get it, right? Like, the, 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 your priority is getting ready for the NFL draft. I, is there a way to do things differently and make, you know, just because you want these games to still be exciting and showcase opportunities, is there a way to change it to get kids to want to play in the bowl games before they go? Or is this just something we're going to have to accept that bowl games are, are – this is the way it's going to be moving forward? Yeah, this is the way it's going to be. And if you haven't noticed, my approach to the bowl game is it's not the last game of the year but the beginning of the next season. And that's where you start seeing me a year ago. You know, people don't recall this, but Roman Hemby and guys like Antoine Littleton played major roles in yeah, the uh, yeah. pinstripe bowl and, and really – came on strong and then had great years this year. And I can just tell you, going into the NC State game, you're going to see some young players that have played maybe minimum roles during the year. Now they're thrust into starting roles, and you'll see almost like the passing of the torch or the transition from last year to this year. Because I can tell you, I've watched, you know, Shalik Knotts, Punch Knotts, our young receiver, Leon Houghton, Octavian Smith. All these guys now have opportunities to step up, and they've really done that during – these bowl practices that we've had. And so, you know, for us, you'll see the influx of next year's team, uh, the players, the young players that will become focal points in our system. They'll be put on display in the game against NC State. And so to me, it'll be really competitive because of how we've recruited and how we develop these guys. And you'll still get the same kind of product. Uh, by the way, I, I was going to say, the receiver position, you kind of almost have to do that, obviously, yeah. uh, given it is where where you are. The, the importance still of somehow figuring out a way to win that game. Obviously, you want to get those young players involved. But I think you and I talked about it a year ago, that just winning a game against Virginia Tech, no matter what the circumstances are, it's it's galvanizing for a fan base, right? Now you get another ACC opponent, a location where you're probably going to have a lot of Maryland fans traveling to again for the game this year in Charlotte. The significance of that, whereas a lot of people would say it's a bowl game, it's silly, it's kind of a celebration, but what it actually does for your program and, and, and again, galvanizing this fan base seems like it's significant. It's... No, it's very significant for us. And one, it's a huge difference between eight and five and seven and six. And so the object for us is to prepare and we're putting together a game plan to go try to win the game. Um, but definitely for our fans and anybody that's been associated with Maryland, to play an ACC opponent, I'm a big proponent of this type of scheduling. You know, I'd much rather play one of our ACC rivals than play an SMU, which kind of doesn't fit, in, or play a Charlotte on the road. Um, and so, you know, this is to me what, what I'd like to see us do more of, uh, these regional rivalries or these, these old rivalries from our prior conference. Uh, and it, it does galvanize our fan base, and there'll be competitive games. Uh, again, our team is excited about going down to Charlotte. Um, and and facing NC State, Dave Dorn is somebody I know really well, and he's had a great year down there, and they're facing some of the same things we're facing with, you know, players leaving and and not being there or injuries, and and we all face it at this time, but I can guarantee you it'll be a really good game. No doubt about it. Um, Just one more on the bowl game thing. I know the NCAA did like a waiver for eligibility rules that you could participate in the bowl game and not have it impact redshirt. Do you feel like – that might be something that needs to become more permanent moving forward, given what we were just talking about, the number of players that are, are not going to be participating in bowl games. Yeah, it was sure would help. But we, had, again, we prepare for this knowing how we play our players. And we really only had one or two people that it affected where, you know, we had saved a game. Now, had I known this, it would allow me to have played right. some of these younger guys a, a, a game, a game, one more game maybe. And so, no, I do think there's some great benefits to it, especially with losing players. Uh, player safety becomes an issue when you have depth issues with whether you play a guy or doesn't play a guy because guys have declared. And so definitely makes it easy when they just blanket wave it at the bowl game as a, a, a neutral, does not count against your four, uh, helps us as coaches for sure. All right, um, just another minute or two here with Mike Loxley on GCR. Coach, you mentioned that you're not always going to the transfer portal, but one name – I, and I, I, you're going to have to tell me, you can tell me if I'm not allowed to ask, but there's a Baltimore kid that we found out was going to be coming back this way in Tyrese Chambers. Are you allowed to talk about him? 
I am not. Okay. He has not signed. Um, then I apologize. I know it's signing day. I'll yep. pull the I'll pull the curtain back. Coach and I All talked good. beforehand, so mm -hmm. um, some of these questions that I'm asking, I just didn't know what the rules were, were for all of that. Right. So we will have another conversation in the future about those yeah. <laughs> things. We'll make that happen. Yeah. The momentum that you build, how many times do you find it funny when, when somebody says something about, I can't believe that Maryland is somehow in on this kid. I can't believe that that kid's thinking about Maryland. It's um, I don't get to hear that a lot because anybody that knows me knows I, I go big fish hunting and, and I'm not taking a back seat based on where I'm at. And uh, recruiting is a relationship business. Uh, I've built a, a really strong reputation in terms of having uh, being a guy that does what he says he's going to do, get guys degrees, prepare them for the next level, teach them how to be great husbands, fathers, better brothers, better sons. Um, to me, those are the 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 the, the the foundation of what it's like playing in a program led by me. So um, I, I don't get to hear that a lot because if they're usually from this area or yeah. I have some type of ties with these kids, uh, I have enough third party validation that will validate that I am who I say I am and that um, the things that I'll say I'll do for a kid and uh, helping him develop into becoming a, a man uh, we get done. I know that's true. Uh, my buddy uh, Mike Francis and I have talked about that a lot over the years, and it was great to be on the field with he and AJ the day of the uh, the food drive at the Ohio State game, and and just that, what incredible humans those guys yep. are. Great, um, great family. Before I let you go, uh, we had Pete Shinnick on last Friday, and he was telling us about a phone call he got from you right after he got the job, and despite the fact that you guys are playing them the first game next year, you said. Come on down. Uh, watch us in our bowl prep. Whatever I can do to help you out. Can you take me through? We know how much Towson means to you, but it's a unique circumstance when you're going to be playing that team next year. Can you take me through why it is that you said, I don't care. I want to be I want to be here to help you, whatever that means. Yeah, my, I mean, again, we all do the same things football-wise now. As we were game plan, we're not game planning for Towson. So, you know, what we run and how we do it, uh, he'll see what we're doing to prepare for NC State. Um, now, am I inviting him down to summer camp to watch <laughs> us get ready for our first game? No, that won't be the case. Um, but, you know, obviously a change was made there. Rob Ambrose was a teammate of mine. I thought he did a phenomenal job there. Yep. We all get into this business and understand that the day we're hired, the only other thing that can happen next is being fired or you re being or you retiring. Um, they decided to make a change. They brought in a veteran coach who has had great success in all the different places he's been. And I got a lot of respect for, for Pete and the job he's done as a coach at West Florida and some of the other places he's coached. So uh, being an alum, um, when I heard about him getting a job, I thought, number one, coming to the state of Maryland, uh, I, I owed it to him. We're the flagship university or the big brother here, per se. And I wanted to make sure that I uh, – introduced myself, extended the invite that, you know, we're here to help promote the game of football for the great state of Maryland as a flagship university. And that extends to the other universities here in the state, as well as high schools, youth football programs. And so, uh, again, we, doors are always open. Um, obviously, we do play them game one. So uh, once, you know, we get done with bowl prep and we start, you know, he can see all of the things we do in the off season program, all those things. But as we prepare to play them, obviously he becomes an opponent. And, and, and the goal will be for us once we get to that game uh, is to find a way to, to go out and put our best foot forward as, as the Maryland football program. Coach, always appreciate you. Uh, root, not only rooting for you guys in the bowl game, but uh, really rooting for you as uh, you take this journey uh, with your personal help. Maybe, maybe you and uh, Frankie Tiafo can be uh, knocking around balls in this process. Uh, something yeah. like that as, as you make that journey. <laughs> Coach. Yeah, I don't know about the. I had double knee replacement surgery this <laughs> summer, so I don't know if I'm probably ready to not, go lateral just yet. Probably not going to work out so much. Hey, uh, yeah. Coach, congratulations on a successful season. Best of luck in the bowl game. Merry Christmas to you uh, and your whole family, Kia, everybody. Thank you for taking the time for us, as always. All right. It's... No problem, guys. And don't forget it's my birthday on Christmas, too. Don't just hey, say Merry hey, happy, Christmas. Happy birthday. Happy man, birthday. Man, I it's got to be, right? It's got to be tough gift-wise. I can't imagine how that was a lot of fun growing up. Uh, thank it was really fun because my mom's birthday was on Christmas, so she made oh. sure I got gifts. Oh, that's special, man. <laughs> Coach, uh, yes, sir. The happy birthday. Merry Christmas. Thank you, as always, my friend. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for having me on, Glenn.